Hi, this is Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf from Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, and you're listening to Trek FM. T. L. Gray, hot. Welcome to another serving of Earl Grey, where we talk all things Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm Philip Gilfus in the center chair this week, and I'm joined on my left by Counselor Darren Moser. Darren, Darren, where are you? Wait, you're on a computer screen. I'm over we're, here on the screen, fella. Were you in the same room with me last time we recorded? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, that was a one-time thing. Oh, oh that's wow. sad. Wow, you know, the- I know. That's, that's God, right? Just rip the heart out of me. I'm dude. never going to see you again. For the first time, for the last I time. Don't, I don't think we snored that loud, did we, in the room? Anyway. Well. It's okay. You guys were in the other room, so I didn't mind at all. Okay, well, I'm also joined by my much more loyal uh, first officer, Commander Daniel. Pr- now, wait, hold on. Daniel's not here? Was McDuff around yeah. now? What's happening? Where were you, Daniel? Oh, man. You know what? I missed several cosplay opportunities uh, this past week. Probably the most important now, thinking in my head, is Commander McDuff. Oh, that... Yeah. Oh, we could have rocked the three <laughs> red shirts. Awesome. That would have been awesome. We could have taken our album cover. Like, not, you know, podcast album, but like our rock band oh my cover God. band. So- now this is just like filling my head with these great ideas. I could have gone as Commander McDuff and just shown up in other people's parties and groups. Like I totally <laughs> belonged there. <laughs> Don't. Oh, you hey guys, me what, what's going on? I'm just I'm Commander McDan. There's why can't I hang out with you? You know, <laughs> like we always do. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, as folks who may have listened to our previous episode may know, we recorded episode. 152 Captain Proton's Revenge in person, along with the intrepid crew of To the Journey. But now that we've all oh, I see what you did nice. there. That was nice. That was nice. <laughs> Word wordplay. But now that we've all returned to our home stations, we just wanted to recap our Star Trek Las Vegas experience. And of course, to much uh fanfare, share our episode of Super Bridge Mates. Record at the Roddenberry stage at Parks Bar at Star Trek, Las Vegas. Okay, so let's just go, you know, opening thoughts. We're going to go by chronology because we're boring that way. But just opening thoughts. And let's, let's just start with Daniel. First time Star Trek Con. What, 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 what you've, you've gotten to think about it for a week. What, what are your thoughts about the happening? Not, not just first time Star Trek Con, first time convention ever. So it oh. was. Was it, it your was first, first time, time to, to Vegas? Vegas? Yeah, yeah. Many, many significant. Oh, wow. uh, how do we say this? PG rated. Yes. Beginnings. Many <laughs> satisfying first times is what I'll say. Um, <laughs> no, it was great. It was it was so much fun. It really was a blast. Um, obviously, and, and I'm not the first to say this. I'm not going to be the last to say this on this podcast. I'm sure. The highlight, of course, is meeting both both you two fellas as well as everybody else, uh, all of our friends from around Trek FM and, and uh, the larger podcasting community. I mean, that was by far my favorite part and what I, we spent the most time doing, you know, without, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, the con itself was good, um, but to me, it just it served to facilitate that, that meeting, that grouping, that kind of social thing so and that was so much fun that it didn't really didn't even matter i mean we went to three or four panels um i'm sure we'll get into that but uh that was secondary to me it was it was fun it was cool to in uh there you know there's a there's a story about uh darren almost elbowing nana visitor in the face uh which maybe we'll get to in a chronology we're not yes, there yet yes so to answer your question so much fun uh, such a great experience you make it sound like I saw her across the room, and I just walked up and was like, this one's for Daniel. Luckily, you won't know who did this to you. Um, <laughs> My name is Daniel Prue. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, no, uh, you know, I can't say enough about uh, what a wonderful special time that was and 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 how how it was just great just to see everybody, you know. 
All right. And then, Darren, your first time in Vegas, I believe, and certainly your first time in Star Trek Las Vegas. So what were, what were your thoughts now that you've had a couple of days to settle in? Yeah, de- yeah, my first time staying overnight in Vegas. I'd previously driven through it on a road trip up to Montana, which was a good enough dose for me. Uh, but now, you know, several days. And again, just, just like Daniel said, you know, I, I, I can't imagine, even with a Star Trek convention as fun as that is, going and not knowing anybody. I don't think I would have had any... I mean, you would, I would have had a little fun because there's other Trekkies around and you're going to make some sort of connection. But it was so much fun. I mean, I think there was like 15 or so people that I just directly already knew going there. So that was a huge group. And, you know, that's also kind of like Larry Nemechek and, and, you know, John and Ken and and other people that aren't, you know, that I talk to very often. But I mean, Larry's on every (laughs) other week, we know. But but no, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I drove there. So, of course, I got to pack a car full of things that we didn't absolutely need, but would be a lot of fun to have in Vegas. So, uh, yeah, so Aaron Harvey and I drove up from L.A. through the wonderful desert. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I would trade that for the commutes you guys had with the layovers. It was pretty on par with not being fun, but we got there. Right, and you you were flying the runabout, of course. Yes, we were flying the the, the Rio Grande and, to and, the Rio. And, uh, you know, Darren, you mentioned Larry. And Larry, if you're listening, we were in the room, you know, that you had your booth several times. Happened. Larry was never around. Just I'm just, you know... Well, he well he came. Well, to the I wasn't party there for the party, you Darren. There, so, we, so, oh god, <laughs> awkward, Darren. Darren, chronology, chronology. <laughs> okay, okay. So we arrived and checked in. No, <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Let, but, let's just go ahead and get into the chronology here. Um, so you know, day one, of course, is is actually Darren. He is issue zero, <laughs> um, in the Earl Grey, uh, Star Trek Las Vegas continuum. Um, and so I know we go pretty quickly, but Darren, give us like the uh, the thirty second day one for you. Yeah, well, we arrived, Aaron and I, and so, it, you know, we was, it was in the evening by the time we actually got there, just a lot of traffic and such, but that way we could hit the next day strong, and, you know, you, Philip, were going to arrive in the morning, so I had to pick you up, but the, the first cool thing that happened was our room, and we got a sweet upgrade, but, the, but not even oh, that. Now, the when room you're about to number. say this, all I'm picturing is the scene from Star Trek Four when Chekhov rings off Admiral Kirk. To explain where they are, but go go ahead. No, no. So so he so so we get uh we're checking in for the room and we get room seventeen zero zero one. So room one on the seventeenth floor of the tower, and I'm like, eh, close enough. That's perfect. That's it's exactly. I mean, for a Star Trek convention, that's a perfect room to be Admiral, in. It's the Enterprise. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and Philip, our room is the Enterprise. <laughs> Uh, well, after I was done decorating, it was the Enterprise, true. so that was, yeah. But yeah, so no, but the first day was just checking in and, and unpacking. Uh, the turbo lift system was not really on par, so I pretty much had to go across a bridge, down to the first floor, over to another elevator, then up to our room, you designed and down shit. the hall. Yeah, it was interesting. We took Must have been trips, the discovery. I said, I brought Hey-o! Zing! Oh! <laughs> oh! But, uh, but no, so that was, that was the first day. It was pretty much just checking in and settling into our awesome space. All right, and then I came along uh, in, in day one or day two, depending on how uh, your canon is for SPLV. Uh, Thursday, right. some would call some it. Some would call it. Not me, though. Uh, yeah, uh, Bridge Mates Eve. Um, <laughs> uh, <Bridge> mates <laughs> Eve. Uh, Did we sing carols that day? Well, I, I put up remember. some stockings. Some... I don't know about you, but uh... <laughs> there was some carousing. Um, I, th- I, I, I'm, I went to. I remember you, you and Aaron picked me up from the airport. Um, um, I don't remember. I think you you sort of took me on the tour, and I guess I don't know for folks right. that listeners, you know, you may have heard maybe uh, TTJ to the journey to talk about their experience, but I guess we should briefly you know, talk about the layout, you know, uh, uh, we were in the hotel, which is off the Las Vegas strip. So it's sort of self-contained in, in a way you're not really going to go anywhere outside of there. Um, but the, for the convention setup, once you kind of got to the convention side of Rio, they sort of had tableaus set up across the main convention. They're sort of the big 50th Delta shield, um, uh, where everyone had to right. take their picture. Photo ops. Yeah. 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 Sort of mandatory. You had to, you could not do the convention without doing a Delta shield pick. Um, but as you walk, there are different tableaus, 
where you can do different cool pictures. There's the Guardian of Forever. There's the Borg alcoves. There's the uh, TOS Tribble. There's a TOS Transporter. Those are just in the hallways, just walking around. You just take pictures there. And so that was sort of the cool part. And then there's sort of three main rooms. Um, well, I suppose more than that, but you sort of have your main, uh, what's the word? Theater. Theater um, where you, all the main panels are. Very, very huge. Very, very huge. How many people? Or seats? Well, that would be the entire con, so around 6,000 right, people. so that's how many chairs are there. So it's pretty, pretty huge and big. Um, then you have your secondary stage, which I don't think I ever went to, honestly. Um, but they that sort of, I guess, secondary panels. And then you had your third stage, or the Roddenberry Quark Spar stage, where we spent most of our time, to tell you the truth, um, and that sort of had um, sort of more fan-created content. Then you had the huge dealer's room, uh, which we can probably go into if we want to. Um, then you had sort of the uh, photo op- autograph opportunity where you sort of had sort of like, I don't call them B-stars, but sort of like, you know, the, the you just like would walk in this room and be like, oh, there's James Darren, there's Robert O'Reilly, there's just, just sitting there. And so that was, I think, the coolest part. You just like would walk around and just like stare at them and, you know, like, like a museum. But um, yeah, so that, that was just sort of the layout. But uh, that was a tour Darren took me on. <clears throat> now, I think that the highlight of day one, two, slash Thursday was definitely, Daniel, you can, you can go into it, uh, was the big, huge party that no one will ever forget their experience. Oh. It was really the highlight of all the trip. Uh, well, wait. There, well, there's a couple things that happened first. So first, we, we met up with a lot of Trek ephemers. We saw Tristan and Char's meet right. for the first time, which was cool, at the burger place. And we saw the Whoopi Goldberg panel, right. which is the first time she had ever been to a Star Trek convention. She did really, really mm-hmm. well. And that was a lot yeah. of fun. So, we did, yeah, we did a couple panels and whatnot. But then around 8 o'clock, like you said, uh, Bridge Mates Eve. Yeah, we were, tweet- we we were, were tweeting, have... you know, the parties up at, you know, by invite only. Tell them Data sent you. Yes, we had the secret. Uh, the passcode was one zero one eight five four three Victor Charlie five three four B. You know, and nobody showed up. I don't know why. No, uh, but no. So we again, like I said, being able to drive and bring a lot of things you don't need, but you can have. Uh, we deck our I decorated with uh, the Star Trek blueprints from the Enterprise D were all around the walls. There were uh, on the main table we had set up. Uh, to play the Star Trek Interactive via VCR board game, a Klingon challenge. And there was, you know, there were cards, there were all sorts of fun things and name tags. I mandated, right. I mandated name tags because I don't know anything. Right. And for folks so. who don't know how to host an online party, it has to be name and Twitter handle. That is yes, a must. That makes it much, much Honestly, easier. Honestly, if you ever go to any c- convention, I th- let's just, just make your own name tag that has your name. And your Twitter handle. It will make things 100% easier. Trust me. Uh, yes. But yeah, I think everyone had a lot of fun. Um, as, as always, e- Earl Grey hosts the fun. So we hosted all the, the fun. And that's two noise complaints, folks. Read it and weep. Two noise complaints. <laughs> so, yes, we did get two noise complaints. And apparently after that, all I did was shush people. But we didn't get a third, so... I'm happy with that, but we did play the Star Trek Interactive VCR board game of Klingon Challenge, which was a lot of fun, and we beat it. We had six people playing, and I don't think anyone but me had played it before, which was really fun, and Tristan had the final win move with 19, or was it, no, it was like 16 seconds left on the counter, so we barely, barely made it, but we we stunned uh, uh, Kovac. Not, not, yeah. now, now tell the listeners, Not Galron. What brilliant idea you had with your board game. Well, well, it was because he was, like you said, right there in the uh, aut- autograph room. So I took my copy of Star Trek The Next Generation Interactive VCR board game, A Klingon Challenge, down to the, uh, the, the signing room and had Robert O'Reilly, or not Galron, sign it. He did sign it, Galron. I wasn't going to correct him, but... Uh, th- yeah, so I have a signed and, box and now. now. And he did offer me if I wanted to buy number two <laughs> off of the line, which I'm like, mm, I'm good. I already have it, and I, I really don't... <laughs> whatever you're going to charge for it, I don't need. But. Yeah, but we thank all the hosts from around the network and outside the network, and all listeners who came. We certainly enjoyed hosting you um, and getting a get-together. And, and Yeah, there was just, like maybe, I want to say like 30 to 40 people over the couple of hours we had it. I mean, it was a nice size group and, and everyone had a lot of fun and that, and that made me happy. I I like my wife and I like hosting people and 
And so that brought me joy to have a place that people could come together and play a game that was really fun. And uh, there was some uh, Norm's friend, uh, Todd, <laughs> who was the, the, the life of the party. The Commodore? Yes, the Commodore Todd. And he, he's really on TOS. He's not much on TNG. So I was starting to explain the blueprints to him. And he was a little uh, inebriated, I would say. But he uh, was very happy right, right, weren't we all? to learn about you know, the Enterprise. Guys, this party and sounds like so much fun. Uh, <laughs> man. I, 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 it was, we were only missing <laughs> one thing. Could it uh, I can't really put my Did I forget to pack something? Kevin! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's go on to day three, or Bridgemates Day. Uh, Daniel, take it, take it from there. What, what, talk about the date. Well, since Philip is just going to gloss over it, uh, after this wonderful party, they had to come pick me up <laughs> from the airport. We had to shut the party we, down we literally, literally to go pick up Daniel listeners, from the we airport. We literally planned the party in picking up Daniel, um, and we're like, guys, we don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. We have to get this ready for Daniel. <laughs> That was how Daniel contributed. He he was our answer for yeah, ending wah, the party. Wah. Yeah, <laughs> but that's okay. I I wasn't able to. But, but Daniel, tell us about your arrival and and the. Yeah, no, I was I wasn't able to get in until about eleven o'clock local time, uh, on Thursday evening, which was uh, what two o'clock in the morning my time. Uh, so that was fun. That was a great a great fun. But, but yeah, you know, uh, Darren brought me to uh, In and Out Burger. As an East, as an East, that's right. As an East Both Coast you guys. or something I've never had before, so that was nice. Um, we went. There were hats, and you guys uh, humored we me and wore, wore the, the hats. hats. There are pictures. I mean, um, and then we, you know, we, we, you know, we did the little tour and, and went to bed, of course, because it was late, and everybody was so partied out. <laughs> I was like, "Hey guys, let's let's stay up and talk. We can make s'mores. <laughs> we can tell ghost stories. Why? Why is everyone?" Daniel's sitting there with a with a harp. Row, <laughs> row, row your boat. And we're just like, good night, Daniel. We're going to bed. Uh, but the next day was the big day for us because uh, right at 12, 12 to 30, can't remember. Now, now we started to actually, was, what, what, didn't we go to a panel? Um, I feel like we started the day off with something that we didn't just go smash into Bridgemate. Well, we wore our Bridgemate shirts. Right. So we were kind of canvassing the area. And you didn't want to take pictures yet because we weren't in our cosplay, but we were taking, but we, that's what we did. We took our, the three of us pictures Mm -hmm. because there was actually three of us, you know, we were all there at that point. So yeah, so we took some pictures in the Borg alcoves and, and a couple of places we did the dealer's room, just, we, you know, things did did the tour for Daniel. Yeah. The tour for Daniel. And I think we did a panel. Which one, though? It wasn't PNG. It wasn't Mulgrew, because that was Saturday. No, you know, you're right. We didn't do a panel until later that uh-huh. day. Because um, we only did the Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> panel on, on Wednesday. Or sorry, on Thursday. But I feel like we did go to something. Then, I just remember quietly freaking out, because <laughs> when we went to do our technical check Oh, I know what we yeah. did in the morning. We had our tech rehearsal. Yeah, no, I remember that. <laughs> because because <laughs> they couldn't find an, auto, an audio. Which listeners are probably bored me talking about this uh the, the the tech guy couldn't find the audio cord i'm like oh well that plays no part in what we're doing <laughs> yeah the audio cable that would connect the computer which plays all of our sounds and the audio from the movie right, clips. So I, so i'm just yeah. quietly yeah, freaking out minor about thing four hours in the morning um but it, don't worry it's gonna be installed on tuesday <laughs> philip that's totally no, no, fine we didn't do any um, panels but we did uh, we did have a lovely breakfast with uh, the women at warp folk as well as as well oh, as uh, right. Aaron. Was. So. Mm-hmm. The, buffet. The, the buffet. Yeah, yeah. You got to meet Did you got to do the buffet at least yeah, once? It was cool to meet all of them for the first time and even um even ones I really haven't even met like I never met Grace even virtually before so that was nice to sort of meet all four um so that was a good experience. Then we- Again, name tags would help me. I mean, it's Oh, it's, just cuz they're women, yeah. they all look alike, Darren, is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Uh, but you know, having hanging around with Shar and Tristan and Aaron, of course, that was sort of the the core. I uh, don't know how many. Numbers. Yeah, we all kind of stuck together through most of the con. I mean, we would sometimes go off and do our own things, but for the most part, we were at least in a group of like five. It seemed at at any given yeah, time. But, you know, standard away team uh, configuration, of course. <laughs> um, yes, but but now, guys, how did you react to when people came up to you 
some people who may be listening now may have been some of those people. How how was that? Uh, odd. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it is you know we 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 enjoy ourselves every week and we do this for fun and and we are kind of intellectually aware that there are people that hear us every week, but it's not really at least for me it's not something that enters my thought process too often. So it's kind of strange to have somebody be like, "Oh, hey, by the way, I'm I'm a fan and I listen." And I'm like, it. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I do? I don't know. Like this, this is a lot of stress. <laughs> uh, but it, they pull out a, a microphone. I want to record yeah, yeah. everything you say. But you know, uh, so if I ever came off a little standoffish, that was just why because it's it's a very bizarre experience. Um, you know, when you've never been exposed to that kind of a thing before. Um, but it was it was I mean it was humbling. It was amazing. It was it, we we received so much support. It was it was wonderful and. Uh, and it was super cool to meet those people as well. Yeah, it, there was, I mean, I could probably count on one hand the number of people who, who recognized me. I, I think it was more so after you guys were there and they saw, like, the three of us. Because in the beginning, they'd be like, <laughs> three oh, white guy looks guys, like, glasses, like Darren. laughing yeah. a lot. Wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, because before it's like, oh, that, that looks like Darren. Ah, that can't be him. And then it's like, oh, look, there's Darren, Daniel, and Philip. That must be Earl Grey. They're wearing Earl Grey t-shirts. I wonder if that's them. But yeah, no, that was it. Was cool. I mean, it's it's an interesting experience. I'm I'm glad the level of recognition we had it wasn't yeah. too much higher because <laughs> that would have been, I think, a little much. Like we can't get down the corridor. But. Uh, you know, they hadn't seen our Super Bridgemaid's prowess yet, so okay. thank, well, you know, thank goodness for we'll that. We'll get to your attention hogging in another day, Darren. Just hold on, okay? Um, so, there was Super Bridgemaid's. Of course, um, listeners, you will hear that um, at this end of this short talk here, so we won't spoil it. Um, uh, I will attempt not to do the opening of the Ensigns of Command when Data tells <coughs> Ricard and Beverly perhaps they should choose another uh, performance to attend um, that might be a little bit better. Um, because apparently you shouldn't be too honest about things. So, um, I, I will only do this. This, I'll, this will be my disclaimer. And this is all I'll say. Um, listeners, when you listen to Super Bridge Mates, there was an error on my part. I am fully responsible. Um, I probably would have handled it differently now that I've had a week to think about it. Um, but I will, without <laughs> spoilers, a team did not get a question, um, because of circumstances. Um, and so, you know what? I don't know who really won. Listeners, you tell me who you think won. I'm going to leave it at that, okay? But anyway, you guys can say, did you have fun? That's all, I, you know. Yeah. Oh, I had so much fun doing Super Bridge Mates. And, and again, it's we're podcasters. We do an audio-only format that is edited before it gets to you guys. And the other thing is, I felt that we were kind of, not negatively, but we were pushed to to add elements to Super Bridgemates that we don't normally have. We don't normally have all this interactivity, which was fun, but it is very challenging. Like, I did not begrudge you being the host and coordinating all of that. I just had to do the technical side, which was enough in that. So it was very complex. And I think, yeah, definitely after having a week to think about it, there were things we could have streamlined or or cut out or, or shifted. No, but, don't, don't but say all, shift. All all, don't it, say shift, Aaron. <laughs> I might have flashbacks. <laughs> but all in all, it was fun. I think the guests, like the, the participants had fun. I think the audience had fun. And I mean, listening, editing it together, everyone in the audience is having a good time and is laughing and, you know, the jokes are good. So I think, you know, it was a good time. Now, Daniel, what did it feel like to enter a stage to enter? <laughs> it was fun. I, I had a blast. Um, and you know, no, no. Also, and and folks, I don't want to overpromise. There is video. <laughs> it may come out. I don't want to say when or how. Um, but I think my favorite part of Bridgemates, or one of the top five, was that we had three teams, as you well know, and as you will hear, which you can't hear obviously um, through audio, but you can through video. Is that two of the teams <laughs> had two chairs. Well, Free Enterprise, of course, only had one chair for two people, because guess what? Only winners get chairs. Yeah, chairs are for winners. But you know, uh, no, but here's not. the thing, right? We had a blast, all six of us that were participating. And, uh, you know, not to make Philip red in the face, but, uh, you know, everybody was very aware. Uh, he was very uh, nervous the entire time before and, and was upset about the situation afterwards. But I think if you listen to the sh uh, the 
the event, you'll realize that things just happened and, and it was fast and it was out of his control. But the whole thing was so good. It was so much fun that, you know what, you know, it was there's no reason to get upset about what happened. Like Darren says, we're not used to this. We, <laughs> we, we don't do this, uh, you know, and it was it was just a lot of fun to be up on the stage with those people. And here's the thing. We didn't lose. So I technically so uh, I don't really care about the end results. Uh, That's right. no, no spoilers. You know, no spoilers. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we had a panel yeah, at Star Trek I, Las Vegas. I mean, how many people can s- nah. drop drop the mic and not just and walk Star away. Trek Las Vegas? <laughs> Star Trek Las Vegas 50th anniversary, folks. Then you drop the That's mic. right. So on the 100th, they're going to bring <laughs> us back out. Oh, God, and, I uh, hope not. <laughs> well, I have to say that my favorite part, because I, in everyone who I have gotten good feedback with, I am listening to it, and I do appreciate it. But, you know, I, I, I being, you know, it's always going to be bothering me. But anyway, but I think my favorite compliment was the tech guy, who I saw, like, two days later, because he's running tech for the Roddenberry stage the whole time. And I'm just like, hey, you know, thanks for, you know, helping out, and da-da-da. He's like, Oh, are you guys doing it again today? I'm like, wow, whoa, whoa, cowboy, you know. But, but I'm like, well, if the audio guy, because, you know, he's just there in the day, you know, there right. the whole day. Did he think we needed a second go? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, look, if he enjoyed it and he's just sitting there, sh- you know, schlubbing it the whole day, you know, he, when you entertain the tech guy. Because well, that's remember, they had, a, they had a gap at that same slot the next day, which I remember we noted in the schedule. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, one, one and done is, is sure. enough. So, so we had that, and I'm going to kind of cut fast forward here. So basically, the next day, and I might be slipping days together, so you, we're going to basically do a little amorphous and just go thematically now. All right, guys, let's talk TNG panel. Um, <laughs> we went to a panel with... What was happening? <laughs> what Jonathan was going Frakes, on? <laughs> your Captain William T. Riker of the Titan, with uh, Commander Counselor Deanna Troy, also of the Titan, and with Lieutenant Commander War, formerly of Defiant Deep Space Nine. Guys... Did that not capture why we do this? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a crazy uh, sh- show! It, it was a show. It was a crazy experience that, like, uh, Frakes was literally roaming the audience. He was not on stage for most of the uh, of the panel. I think he went into Scott Bakula's yeah. like photo op booth and was like <laughs> taking pictures with them. It was it was really it random. was you know it's one thing to know and to hear. And to see in these interviews their camaraderie, but it's another thing to experience it in person. And that was it was one of the highlights of the convention. Yeah. For and me. I think they, I, mean, I think that's probably what people say about us too. Yeah, absolutely, uh, without a doubt. <laughs> I mean, I, I play with the ships at my desk too, so. <laughs> but I mean, and they were funny, and they they you know they didn't have a moderator. I don't think one could handle them, <laughs> and. I mean, you had some, and even what was fun is even in that one panel, there were running jokes, like the whole, everyone just asking questions for Jonathan, like was really funny. Marina said the most honest things about questions at cons that we've ever heard that we wish everyone could hear. For any listeners, I really don't mean to insult anyone who's (laughs) ever been to a con or asked, but if I could have Marina Sirtis at every con I go to give a primer on how to ask questions, oh, things would run so much more smoothly. Yeah, well, that and coupled with what Whoopi said, because that was the big thing, because Whoopi said, don't tell me an episode, tell me a moment, like when you were talking about slavery with Patrick, like that's what she remembers, not, do you remember in The Measure of a Man when you were having the scene after the second act before the commercial break, you know, and but yeah, and then what Marina said with, uh, what did she say, she's talking about, I think, um, oh, yeah, don't don't say like, oh, is there some secret behind the scenes thing we're gonna say about a guest star? What we're being recorded, there's thousands of you here. What what are we going to say? Right. I thought that was that was great. Um. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, from a TNG perspective, this being Earl Grey, I think uh, Guinan and the three we just named. There, now there was a panel with uh, Brent, um, with Gates, um, and Tasha. Tasha. Yeah, Denise and and uh, Q John Delancey was there. Um, you know, we tried to get a photo with Daniel, it didn't work out. Uh, but uh, he couldn't remember what episode he was from, yeah, so yeah. Um, nah, never gets old, nah. never gets old. Um, <laughs> but we did get a picture with a Q cosplay, yeah. so that's half as good, pretty much. Okay, so let's let's uh, skip and let's cross our streams. Saturday was our big costuming day. That's right, Daniel went as a Star Trek. <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> And you and I donned the the no, red no, no, command no, no, no. uniforms. No, no, no. Who, who cares about you and command red, Darren? 
What we care about is when you armored up on Saturday, because this is the chutzpah here at Earl Grey. <laughs> what, what happens when Darren goes to the Star Trek 50th anniversary <laughs> once in a lifetime Las Vegas experience? My friends, he brings his stormtrooper armor and he goes down. Well, you know, well, no, I didn't fall over in the stormtrooper armor. That would have been very interesting. But as I stipulate, who doesn't want a picture with a stormtrooper, even at a Star Trek convention? And to be fair, he was wearing the the, the com badge. So that you know. was how I blend in. They just they, <laughs> it was invisible. But no, it was it was a lot of fun, and and I'm really thankful for you guys because you know it was. It was more the walk to the con area that I was nervous of, just because you never know. People are weird, and, and you know, you, you, you cannot see a lot, and you cannot run, and there's a lot you can't do in the armor. But once we got down there, and for the most part, people were really accepting of it. They would, you know, I, I got, of course, the occasional, like, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, wrong convention. But I gave my party line of, I was part of the JJ Exchange program. And that always got a laugh, and then people were like, "Oh, okay, you know, that's that's." Now, of course, our uh, our our favorite moment, I think, or my was that, you know, of course, you know, stormtrooper walking around, and they'd be like, "Oh, R 2s that way." We're like, "Oh, ha ha." Yeah, Yeah, the droids you're looking for down there. Oh yeah, no, never heard that before. And then, of course, Darren described what happened. There, uh, then we start hearing these beeps and and whistles, and I'm like, "Oh, there, someone brought their R two. There is an R two down there." (laughs) And in the middle of the the walkway, there was a circle of people. And R2-D2 was there, and, and he didn't see me coming, so I just come barreling into the circle, point a finger at him, and say, you thought I wouldn't find you here at a Star Trek convention. He backs up about five feet immediately, and the, the handler was doing great, because he was just really putting some personality into it. I love interacting with droids like that, where I'm just playing off of what he's doing, like, as if I can understand what he's saying, and it's it's a lot of fun. So yes, we, we so that was we definitely good. attracted the attention when you have a stormtrooper in R two in the middle of a Star Trek convention. Which I think the hilarious yes. thing was apparently it was Star Wars Day because we had seen a Twitter photo of a Darth Vader steampunk that morning, and then you guys are walking. Or there was the Darth Vader board. Okay, and then we're walking around. And yeah, I saw one and of there's those. There's two people. There's what a Han and a Leia walking around. There's a Han and a Leia. <laughs> And Jedi's, I think it later we, there was a couple of Jedi's. So yeah, no, it was it was a lot of fun, and we just got a lot of pictures, just pictures in the transporters, pictures in the Guardian Forever, in the Borg alcove, and a lot of people, you know, stopped for pictures, which was cool. And because I mean, I love taking pictures. I don't mind, you know, stopping and and doing that with people. And but again, it was nice because for the most part, everyone, you know, treated me really well and. And no, you know, which again, we're all nerds. We're all dressing up and whatever. It doesn't matter what universe we're from. Sure. And 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 we could go hour by hour, but we do want to. You know, I know everyone's excited about listening to Super Bridge Mate, so we'll kind of boil it down here, guys. I'll give you basically your your five to ten minutes of of your favorite parts and the highlights here of the convention. Anything you haven't mentioned here. So, but I'll just say, you know, of course, like we've all said, you know, whether it was um, lunch or dinner or breakfast or whatever, hanging out with everyone. We got opportunities to play Star Trek Seen It with some of the group. Uh, you know, it's always either us and the women and, and to the journey. And then, you know, Aaron and, and everyone else would come and we played. We, in fact, did get to experience a Klingon challenge. And I believe we beat it with 12 seconds, 13 seconds. I think it was it was 16 for the first time and 19, 19 for, the, for second the second time. So, yeah. Yeah, both under 20. Yeah, so it was, it was a very good experience. So um yeah i mean i think you know we we going through all the pictures i think something amuses me every day i'll probably post one picture for the next like two months of of star trek 50th um and so it was definitely a decompressing of you know it's the it's old uh cliche you know the post con blues or whatever but you know i can't really like you know like hey daniel darren where do you want to go? oh you're not here no. <laughs> what do we do oh shoot um but yeah i definitely enjoyed myself drinking a bunch of james t kirk's if you were there, you know what they are. It was green. Um, or blue, possibly. I thought it was blue. Yeah, it, it didn't really matter after the third one. I'm gonna <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, so I enjoyed meeting all the listeners, meeting all the fellow co-hosts, meeting all of you. And, of course, um, I hopefully that fun and, and excitement will get captured here and what follows here. Um, but, uh, Darren, what, what was your anything that's been left on set here about Star Trek Vegas? Well, it was also fun after we played Seen It on Saturday night, which was fun because uh, everyone there was like, oh, do we want to play Seen It? And everyone had a copy, but nobody ever wanted to play with it. It was all the same. Nobody wants to play with us because we're all so good. 
And it was a challenge, not a Klingon challenge, but it was a challenge because we, we kept getting all the all plays. And literally, as soon as it went up, everybody yelled out the answer at almost the exact same time because we all, we were trying to find a way to put it on the hard setting because it was, you know, it's not, it's not quite designed for this level of fandom, but it was a lot of fun. And then I got to share my 1994 and 1999 Star Trek action <laughs> figure movies that I had made, which I got some wonderful comments. Best part of the con, I think some said, I don't know about that, but it was a lot of fun to share that. And, uh, but yeah, but just overall, just like you said, being able to hang out with friends every, every, you know, we, I never went anywhere alone. We were always doing stuff together and that was a lot of fun doing bridge mates was super fun the the party was was great i'm glad we got to do that because i was in the months leading up to star trek las vegas i was trying to coordinate some sort of get together at like a local restaurant or something it just never panned out but i think the party was perfect just the right size just the right amount of time everyone who was anyone was there and it was uh, daniel uh, <laughs> oh uh yes and the uh, or was in the room that night at some time maybe after no, uh, but it was, yeah, no, I, I do wish Daniel had been able to make it. I think that would have been even, even better. The only thing that could have topped it, but, uh, but it was, but it was a lot of fun and, uh, I don't know about next year, but, but this year was definitely one for the history books. And Daniel, your, your closing thoughts on Star Trek big, just, uh, just a lot of fun, a lot of fun packed into a very short amount of time. You know, there are, there are moments that, uh, that we are, uh, I'm not going to get to talk about one thing that I just wanted to bring up just to get your guys' reaction um, was our very, very brief trip into the Las Vegas Strip, uh, which was oh, extremely Lord. unsuccessful, but uh, is a story that's worth telling, I think. Uh, and maybe in the future we'll tell it. Uh, but uh, we, we, we tried and it didn't work, but that's okay. Um, no. So what do you do when you have a car <laughs> and you want to go to the strip and you need to see the lucky cat, <laughs> the lucky but you don't look to see if the lucky cat was still there, but that doesn't matter. Or you want to go to a casino, so, you can't find where the entrance is to park. <laughs> so the five of us piled into well, the well, car. Let's describe. It was, it what? was uh, myself, Darren, Daniel, Darren at the helm, of course, Matt Hansen, and yeah. Tristan Riddell. Yeah, so we could fit five and we fit five. And so we're heading over and of course it's evening, like nighttime. It's probably like eight or nine o'clock something like that but it was traffic there's tons of traffic and we knew which hotel had the lucky cat and we we're heading towards there and, and i'm trying to find a spot to like drop off daniel and i'm like daniel what or someone asked like could you check like where the lucky cat exactly is and you called them and they said oh we don't do that anymore so we're like okay well that's fine we can circle around and maybe get to caesar's and that took <laughs> way longer than we were expecting uh, so I, of course, this whole time I had Ocean's Eleven soundtrack queued up and playing through our uh, speakers as we drove by the Bellagio and we drove by Caesar's <laughs> Palace and we drove by a lot of things, uh, the pharmacy, pharmacy and a lot of other fun billboards we passed. But uh, so it was, it was fun. I mean, it wasn't walking it, but it was hot. And, you know, walking's overrated. Yeah, you know, so. and he, here's really the long and short of it is, is th <clears throat> th these, you know, we can, we can specify experiences and moments and places and time, but it's all about the entire thing. It's about being with the people. And, you know, that's, that's essentially what it boils down to. And it was just so much fun meeting everyone. And we've, we've mentioned quite a few names here. And I would venture to guess it's probably only half the people that we got to spend time with. And so, you know, to all of those people who, who we didn't mention by name, just as exciting to, to, to see you and to spend time with you as well. It's just too much. It's just it was three days of constant barrages of fun. And we just can't kind of parse it into this short period of time. But it was just so, so wonderful. And, and, and uh, you know, I'll take those those memories with me forever. So there's no doubt about it. Right. If you could have a well, yeah, one more, one last thing I wanted to say was uh, Sunday. So after I dropped both you guys off, uh, if, in two trips to the airport, uh, you know, it was packing and getting everything out of the the hotel. But Aaron Harvey got to be a part of the Roddenberry Stage uh, podcast summit that Ken and uh, John, John and John and Ken put together. 
And that was really fun to see all these different people and everyone was kind of sharing. I think that would have been really fun to get anyone who was like a podcaster from whatever network or from wherever you were, because we all have the same problems and the same, you know, things we work through. So that was really interesting to just hear other people share their experiences. And yeah, and then we just kind of slowly wrapped up. Oh, and karaoke. I forgot to mention karaoke. Two of the nights, uh, not Galron, JG Hertz and JG Hertzler put on awesome Klingon karaoke for two nights in the, in the smaller th- uh, stage. And it was a time to behold Norm and Todd. You totally know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, but yeah, lot, lots of fun. They, they packed it. They planned it pretty well. Uh, for my first Star Trek convention, I had a blast. All right. Okay. Well, to the listeners, we will now present um, the presentation of Super Bridgemates. Uh, the audio quality is probably, you know, it's, it's was in a convention hall. So I know Darren's... D- it's a room mic. Yeah, yeah. So, so Darren did a, did a great job. But just, just know, obviously, it's not going to be like, you know, this audio quality you're listening to now. But we think you'll enjoy it. And then uh, please stay tuned after the presentation of Bridgemates for a special announcement about the future of Earl Grey. So without further ado... Here's Super Bridgemates. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming up right now, Super Bridgemates, Trek FM Interactive Game Show. Let's do it. changes every week. We cover all the series, we cover stuff like music, melodic tracks, we cover um, issues, um, and, and everything dealing with Star Trek. So if you have an interest in Star Trek, you'll hear it on our podcast network. Um, this is a contest, or, a, or a, a competition we've been doing on the podcast for a while here, so we certainly appreciate you for being uh, participants on here. We'll be calling some audience members up to help us out. But without further ado, we're also recording this, so if there's some uh, stuff that looks weird, it's probably just because I want to make it sound good for the audience. But anyway, but for enough of that, so I'm going to officially begin here. Are you all ready? Yeah. All right, well, it's time for another survey of Earl Grey, our dedicated TNG episode uh, podcast here. Welcome to the Roddenberry stage here at Star Trek Las Vegas. I'm Philip Gilfish, your host here, and leader of this away team, here for Super Bridge Mates, the Trek.fm interactive game show. Uh, Super Bridge Mates is a Star Trek based game played around the galaxy. Uh, it's played in podcast co host teams. So, like Trip and Reed, or Rex and Mares, and O'Brien in that console he likes to kick all the time. <laughs> Everyone forms friendships when being on that bridge together. And so we're going to find out how well they know each other and how well they work together here at Super Bridge Mates. So without further ado... The first thing we're going to do, of course, is bring in our team. So first and foremost, the folks closest to my hearts is from Earl Grey, Daniel Prue, and Darren Mo. Chairs are for winners, and uh, but we, we're feeling good. All right, and of course, for our next team, from To the Journey, Charlotte Schmidt and Tristan Riddell. All right, Tristan, Char, how are you doing today? Doing just fine. All right, and could you lead our audience in one TGJ? All right, and of course, for our last team, we have from Women at War, Jara Hodge and Andy Vanderkall. All right, Andy and Jara, how are you doing today? 
Well, without further ado. Team Free Enterprise okay. and Team Free Enterprise only, yes. this video is for you. Okay. Does Data say why he wants to see us? He said something about his new image. I tell you, he's been acting kind of strange lately. How so? Well, if I didn't know better, I'd say he was showing signs of insecurity. <laughs> yes, but you do know better. Androids don't feel such things. I don't know. Sometimes I think he's becoming more human than any of us realize. Come in. Data? Jordy? Is Counselor Troy with you? Yes, I'm here, Data. Jordy said you wanted to see us. Indeed. Or stated more correctly, I wanted you to see me. Can we come in? Please. Did you damage your face, Dana? It is a beard, Jordy. A fine, full, dignified beard. One which commands respect and projects thoughtfulness and dignity. Well, opinions? It's, um, very different. When I stroke the beard thusly, do I not appear more... Intellectual. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to go now. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Why was she laughing? All right, Team Free Enterprise. Okay. That Will Riker cosplay is from the TNG Season 2 episode, The Schizoid Man. But, in a scene removed from that episode's script, what other character did Data attempt to emulate? Is it A, he tries on a series of dresses in an attempt to capture Troy's sensuality? Is it B, Data goes entirely bald in order to be more like Picard? Is it C, he wears a large Klingon sash in order to be more like Worf the Warrior? Or is it D, the android tries on a variety of sweaters to imitate Wesley's childhood? <laughs> it's one of those options. Uh, uh, it's gotta be B. B, which would be the B was Picard. Picard, because I can. Yeah, I can see. I mean, he does a good Picard impression, and he could probably do that in this episode. So we're gonna go with B, Captain Picard. All right, let's see. All right, that is one point for Green Enterprise. So right now, you're winning the game. That's, I think we're done. From Star Trek The Next Generation Companion, which Larry, Larry Nemechek wants me to remind everyone is still for sale. Um, <laughs> it says, quote, a subplot in Tracy Torme's script involved Data's lack of ego. Tripped along with several of the scenes featuring Data's beard was the original tag scene, in which he is seen trying to yet again emulate an admired and respected crew member in this scene to Picard's chagrin the android is bald. <laughs> and there's definitely not a lack of ego on the stage right now. That's right. All right, speaking of which, for Team Lizard Babies, this video is for you. Yes. Yes! Good morning, Captain. That's a matter of opinion. What is it? Internal scans haven't revealed anything about the genetic mutations. The doctor? Still offline. We are investigating the possibility. Inform me of any progress. Understood. There's one more thing. The incident with Tom and Bellana started me thinking about ship's protocol, or lack thereof. Captain. It seems to me that people have been getting a little too comfortable around here lately. They're late for their duty shifts, taking mess hall privileges during non-designated hours, and a lot of people are spending more time on the holodeck than they are at their posts. You are security chief. Don't 13 department heads report to you every day? Yes. Well, straighten them out. Shall I flog them as well? <laughs> <sighs> All right, that was Scientific Method from the fourth season of Voyager. So, lizard babies, 
Tell us what happened for the first time in this episode, according to the official Star Trek Voyager magazine. Was it A, Janeway changes hairstyles four times during this episode? <laughs> Is it B, Tuvok calls Neelix Mr. Talaxian? Is it C, Robert Beltran improvises every one of his lines? <laughs> Or is it D, a character other than Seven of Nine wears tights for most of this episode? That's tough. Wow. Uh, I don't, I, you were the hair expert on, on Janeway, so I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that. Is that just because she's a woman, Tristan? Yeah. Uh, no, because she's written like 16 blog posts about it. I am the hair expert, so I know that's not it. It's one hairstyle in this episode. The tights. Thinking, but I don't know if that's it. I think it is Mr. Talaxian. All right, let's see what the answer is. All right, yes. I'm afraid you're wrong. According to Robert Picard, he enjoyed the chance that this episode gave him to show off his physique. He said, Of course, you got to see me wear tights for the first time. The day that I wore those tights, Jerry Ryan pinched me on the butt about five times. She was just so delighted that someone else had to wear tights on the show. That was when he was in the holiday. I don't remember the tights. I don't remember. Do any of you remember the tights? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, oh, five, five. Five. We were wrong. All right, for a limited award, this is for you. You're persistent, Mr. Sulu. The game has rules. You're ignoring them. I protest, and you come back. You didn't come back. Now you're making sense. I was getting bored. Hmm. Of course, this isn't the time. Any time's a good time. I'm afraid I changed my mind again. You take a lot of chances, Lieutenant. So do you, mister. So do you. I think Phil chose that for us because that's like our favorite Uber scene of all time. All right, that was, of course, from Mara Mara of Season 2 TOS. Now, Council of Mistresses, what actor's illness in this episode stopped a scene from being filmed for over three weeks? Was it A, the goatee mayor Spock wore caused Leonard Nimoy to have a purple rash on his face? Was it B, guest star Barbara Luna's strep throat prevented her from making out with Kirk? Was it C, actresses in their midriff bearing mirror uniforms all caught cold due to the studio sound stage's freezing temperatures? Or was it D, George Takai had serious skin allergies to the material used in the red shirts and was placed in the ICU? We actually don't have to look this one up on Memory Alpha because we know this. Okay. One of the reasons we know this is they had to change Barbara, Barbara Luna's costume to fit her because she lost so much weight due to her Illness. So, it's that one. Whatever number. B. 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 All right. That is correct. <laughs> That's right. During the filming of this episode, Barbara Luna had strep throat and a 103 degree uh, fever, so her kissing scenes with Shatner were postponed for three weeks. It just had to be a Kirk question, didn't it? All right. <laughs> that takes us to... scenes for our teams. Now this is an all play around, so once each team finishes completing their scene, I will ask the bridge mates to ring in. Now, you can use a one word episode title or some catchphrase for Enterprise. What's going to be your ring in? Masks. Mask. All right. The glorious episode. All right. Team Lizards, what's going to be your ring in? Threshold. Threshold. This is how it's going down, folks. All right. And Council Messages, what's going to be your ring in? Angel one. It's two words, but we're going to go for it. All right. We bring quality here. So can I have Zach and, Zach and Mike up here to the stage? All right. Here's the mic. Broit, you disreputable swindler. I've put up with you, Chi, for the last time. 
Sit. Look, er, why don't we just call it even? No hard feelings. Or take another spin on the house. Or two, or three. A free visit to the hall suite. Do you know what a hall suite is? Do you have sex on your world? Look, take it all back, all the gemstones, and I'll throw in a case of Andolian brandy to make your trip home a little more enjoyable. If you like our gemstones, you'll have an opportunity to win more. A lot of Oh, oh, all right, let's let him finish. No, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Zach and Mike. All right. Alan Marine. <laughs> Grace and Aaron, can I have you up front, please? All right, this is scene two. All right, hands on your mental buzzards, bridge mates. Whenever you all are ready. Mr. Spock, I thought you had accompanied Captain Kirk to the rest chamber. Your movements awakened me. My apologies, I did not realize they would disturb you. And only Vulcan ears would find the noise discernible. It seems that Vulcans are fascinatingly different in many ways. The same may be said of Stratos and Captain's. Spoken eyes are very discerning too. You I don't want <laughs> All right, well, let's let him finish. Go ahead. <laughs> really? <laughs> I hear that intellectually, Vulcans are as highly involved as the Stratos city dwellers. We do pride ourselves in our logic. You only take a meet every seven years. The seven year cycle is biologically inherent in all Vul Vulcans. At that time, the mating drive outweighs other motivations. And there's nothing that can be done to disturb that cycle, Mr. Spock? Extreme feminine beauty is always disturbing, madam. All right. Angel so. one. What episode is that? Cloudminders. All right. Grace is the that space is princess. It's the episode where Spock is distracted by the power of silver halter tops. <laughs> <laughs> so logical. So logical. All right. Ken and Beth, up front, please. Roger, Old City. Station at the 2200 hours. All's well. You amaze me, Commander. Oh, how's that? A 20-year space Rachel! Vessel. All right, if you finish. choose the worst duty station in town, I mean, look at this place. This is the hind end of space. He's quite appeals to me, Lieutenant. Well, maybe that's okay for someone like you whose career is winding down. But me, I need some challenge in my life, some adventure. Maybe just even a surprise or two. You know what they say. Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. Step into my parlor, gentlemen. That's Admiral Kirk, my god! Very good for you, Lieutenant. But it's daily regular. No destination order, no encoded IDs. All true. Well, what are we gonna do about it? I am not gonna do anything about it, but you're going to sit in the closet. <laughs> the closet? Have you lost all sense of reality? This isn't reality. This is fantasy. You want an adventure? How's this? Feel the adrenaline going? Good boy. Okay, in the closet. Okay. <laughs> Team Free Enterprise. This is going to be actually next generation based. Can you put them in order from left to right, starting with Haley and Lord? Um, in what order do those colors appear in the credits of TNG, the opening credits? You mean the titles? Yes. You mean the characters on the screen in the titles? Yes. Okay. Well, that's easy, right? It's got to be red first. Right. Patrick Stewart. So red to the left. It's red, yellow, blue. All right, your other left. <laughs> red, yellow, blue. So it'd be Patrick Stewart, Brent, and then Jonathan Frakes, and then Brent Spiner. Okay, red, red, yellow, blue is our vote. All right, good job, good job. All right, thank you all. You have a seat except for my man in yellow. All right, we have our other two folks. Let me get you, yes, and then my monster room come up here. The question is here, can you put them in left to right? How many times did Kirk in that uniform get demoted? Uh, I'm guessing, like, if we're, are we mixing Kelvin timeline? I believe he was wearing the JJ Kelvin okay. timeline shirt. So. Yes. 
so, I mean, he most famously got demoted from Admiral down to Captain in Red. So we put that on the left. Yeah, but then we have uh, JJ where, like, he got demoted in Into Darkness. And that's one time, right? And I think that's one time, so. And then zero. And then zero, yeah. so yellow in the middle. Because it happens after, well, depending on if we're going temporal or air date. <laughs> Are we going temporal or anything? I think really that's a question you have to ask yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, then, depending on the answer is how it is, it is me winning. So, okay. uh, yeah, so uh, you, you agree? I agree. Yes. All right, red, yellow, greenish. All right, let me see here. Oh! Wow. All right, let's see here. All right, so let me check here my wonderful uh, totals here. I mean, I just, I just need to take a moment. I just, you, the Council of Mistresses logo was made by you guys. Made by Jared. Made by Jared. In like 40 seconds. So. <laughs> see, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm afraid, let's see. Making sure we don't have any time. This is more suspenseful than the end of season three. <laughs> All right, so I'm looking at the points here. So, um, I have... Free Enterprise and Council of Mistresses tie. No ties. Which means we've done that before. No. Lizard babies. Oh. Super Richmond. Wait. You tied for second. All right. So now here comes the question. We're going to do a bonus round with Team Lizard Babies. Now this involves guessing the episode from Netflix Summaries. You can do it. Have faith in you. I mean, Netflix is perfectly accurate in everything it says about Star Trek. Alright, so here we go for Netflix Summaries. This is all TNG based, so, you know, because of course. Alright, so you have two minutes. Just give me the episode title. Or you can pass. Here we go. Much to Captain Picard's displeasure. Q reappears on the Enterprise, planning to have been injected from the Q continuum and stripped of his powers. Hi, thank you. That's Deja Q, thank you, Dan. Alright, next, Captain Picard is kidnapped and held with three different aliens. Meanwhile, he is replaced aboard the Enterprise by an imposter. Pass. Alright, after the crew, Allegis. After the crew transports a dangerous material to the Enterprise, a collector out an intricate plan to kidnap Data. Uh, the most torn. Correct. While an alien archive transforms the Enterprise into its ancient society, Data is taken over, over by personalities from the extinct civilization. Mass. All right. Troy deals with feelings that are overwhelming her as she and Worf begin to form a relationship. That's all the Troy episodes. Uh, uh, <laughs> not, okay, not, it's not all good things, is it? Eye of the Beholder. Captain Picard races the Ferengi in an effort to track down the sun he never knew he had. Pass. Pass. Bloodlines. Ensign Rogue is sent to infiltrate the Maquis and finds herself torn between her loyalty to Starfleet and her sympathy for the Maquis. Is it the Maquis? Yeah, the Maquis. Preemptive strike. Okay. Captain Picard and some of his crew are caught in a deadly trap in the holodeck as the result of a ship-wide scan from an alien race. The Big Goodbye. Oh, okay. The Enterprise transports an elderly Starfleet Admiral to negotiate a hostage crisis. <laughs> Too short a season. Worf must choose between his loyalty to Starfleet and his Klingon heritage when two Klingon fugitives take over the Enterprise. Uh, Part of glory. All right. Well, while the Enterprise is en route to rendezvous with Troy Shuttlecraft, a bizarre malfunction caused the transport vehicle to crash on Vega 2. Okay. Nope. No, sorry. Skin of evil. All right. <laughs> I guess we'll... Yeah, we can stop not the Stick to void here. Well, anyway, we thank you all for coming. We thank Team Free Enterprise, our over eight, Darren Moser and Daniel Crew. We thank Team Free Little Babies to the Journey, Charlotte Schmidt and Chris Riddell. To the Journey! And Women at War, Council of Mistresses, Jarrah Hodge and Annie Vanderpoel. I'm Philip Gilchrist, and thank you all for coming.
Previously on Trek.fm, to the journey! He tweets out, you know, like, hey, walking around with my mobile emitter, you know, hashtag blessed. You know, it's just, <laughs> I'm sure that's what he's doing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yep, yep, he's, uh, he's taking photos of his holographic non-dinner. The 602 Club. And even the book started this way, and I remember reading the book and being like, what the F is going on? <laughs> because it's just such a strange scene, you know, this muggle caretaker in this house making tea and you're like, what is happening? But really what's being set up is this bookend of Voldemort looming over everything and finally finding a way to return. Stage 9, a podcast about the people who make Star Trek. It, every Every chance they have... To get him off the bridge of that ship and have him running around on some planet or shooting some guy or jumping on something, they do. And it's like, he's got that chair there, it looks really comfortable, let's have him sit in it for a while and command a starship. And that's what else is happening on Trek.fm. You can listen to every show on the network at Trek.fm with links for iTunes, streaming services, and a direct download link. This week of Earl Grey is brought to you by Audible.com. This is a great way for you to read all of the books you want to read but never have time for. Audible is always expanding with over 150,000 titles to choose from. There are classics, current bestsellers, and famous Star Trek books like Prime Directive and Federation. Audible has something for everyone. Now, as a Trek FM listener, you can get a free audiobook of your choice along with a 30-day trial to try out Audible yourself. So give it a try today. Catch up on all those classic Star Trek books you've yet to read. To support Trek FM, visit audibletrial.com slash trekfm and sign up today. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash trekfm. Thank you, Audible, for supporting Earl Grey and Trek FM. If you are a weekly listener and would like to directly help Earl Grey, please consider becoming a patron of Trek FM. At patreon.com slash trekfm, you can choose a pledge level and receive rewards for becoming a Trek FM patron. You'll be inside the Observation Lounge of our network, able to participate in our monthly patron roundtable podcasts and supporting the production of all of our great content. We would like to take this moment to thank our current patron associate producers, Stephen Boyd and Ron Sarna. Thank you for supporting Earl Grey. Connect with other Trek FM listeners on our Facebook discussion group called The Babel Conference, found through the Facebook search field, or like the facebook.com slash trekfm page for show updates and announcements. The network is also on Twitter, at Trek FM. Well, listeners, we hope you enjoyed listening to Super Bridge Mates, uh, and we have an announcement about the future of Earl Grey. Uh, Daniel, Darren, and I have made the decision several weeks ago as a group um, that we are uh, have decided to uh, end our run here at Earl Grey, and so next week will be the last episode of Earl Grey with the co-host of Darren Moser, Daniel Prue, and Philip Gilfus, and certainly we'll probably be able to talk more uh, last w- or next week as we uh, talk about as we go off into the sunset or a sun in case you guys were in front of a sun you know that, <laughs> by the way are we near a oh, star man, it's are. really bright in here for our second to last episode so uh you, you know we uh, uh apologize for this seems like a sudden announcement but we certainly didn't want to dampen anyone's fun at star trek las vegas or anything like that but certainly this will be the uh the end of Earl Grey, at least under our command. I won't do the Star Trek six ending. But anyway, we look forward to hearing from <laughs> listeners. And There are plenty of, of T's left in the alphabet. So That's true. You think they'll make another <laughs> Earl Grey? <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll just brew another one. <laughs> All right. But yes, so as we, as we head off to next week, if you'd like, you can obviously send us an email through our Trek FM contact page. Already some people have as this was announced a couple days ago on Facebook, and we'd love to hear your, your feedback and, and uh, well wishes as we head off to New Frontiers. But uh, we, we have a great show planned for you guys next week, and we're looking forward to I it. I think he's just saying that because Daniel's in charge, and we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it, it will be uh, fun, we'll... and, and uh, you know, we'll get more into what's going on next week. Um, but uh, you know we we obviously appreciate all the love and support that's already been thrown our way, 
uh, and, and I'm sure that will continue to come in uh, over the next week or so. And uh, like I said, we'll, we will talk. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll uh, learn more uh, next week as well. Yeah, the power of three will never be divided. We are the charmed ones of Star Trek. So now, uh, Darren, when you're not telling people to shh, where can people find you? <laughs> Because that was only half the party, okay? Just the second half of the party. Now, they can find me on Twitter under username Dr. Sci-Fi, D-R-S-C-I-F-I, or my website, DrSciFi.com, where I post all of my Stormtroop, Stormtrooper events, which I got to put my pictures up from Star Trek Las Vegas now that I think about it. All right, Daniel. And when you're uh, not explaining to people your t-shirt that says, this is my cosplay... Where can people find you? Well, they can find me on Twitter, at uh, 1UpDan. That is the number one, not the word, as in one hour late to join the party. <laughs> oh. And when people want to s- know how much of a uh, tread I'm putting into the rug worrying about an audio cord about Super Bridge Mates, they can find me on Twitter, where my handle is NC Public Servant. That's NC for no audio cord! <laughs> I was going to say, it has to be no cord. It has to be no cord. All right. Well, until next week, and our last week, make it so. Live long and prosper. Engage. Fire. Fire.